Chapter 4 Sputnik's Guide to Life on Earth by Frank Cottrell Boyce. We're now after the birthday party, Annabelle's birthday party, that has been a bit crazy. Chapter 4 Mooring Hitch Knots. Everyone seemed to think that now I'd finally said something, I would start talking. But what would I say? Sputnik is dangerous? <laughs> they thought he was a dog. If you say dangerous dog, folk think you're talking about a dog that bites, not someone who hands out deadly weapons at children's parties. Something had to be done. And I was the one who had to do it. It was like that time that Grandad was the only one awake on his whole ship and he saw an iceberg floating right at them. The safety of the whole crew was in his hands. He saved them. I had to save the Blythes. From Sputnik. From the top bunk in Ray's bedroom, I could see a little light shining in Sputnik's stable. I sneaked down to the kitchen. The only sound was the hum of the fridge. I slipped out into the yard. If anyone saw me out there in the dark, they'd definitely think I was trying to run away. But the curtains were drawn. No one was stirring. In the stables, the ponies were sleeping. The chickens kind of purred as I walked past them, but mostly it was quiet. Really, really quiet. I'd never heard quiet like it. No traffic, no voices, nothing. Then something. <coughs> A kind of slimy cough. My heart shrank. I must have gasped or something because Sputnik poked his, poked his head over the stable door. Is that you, Prez? Come in. I now know that the slimy noise was a cow coughing. Now if I hear one at night, I don't even notice. It's the country version of traffic noises, but I didn't know that then. Sputnik had really made himself at home in the wee stable. He'd strung up a hammock in the corner using a proper mooring hitch knot. He'd turned the dog basket upside down and made it into a kind of bedside table with a red, no red notebook on it, a torch and a pencil. The reason I asked you to come over... You didn't ask me here, I just came. Is that I have something very serious to say to you. I think you have to tell Mr and Mrs Blythe that you nearly killed Annabelle and all her friends on her birthday. You're a danger to this household. Really, you should go back to the temporary. I did what? It was you who nearly killed them. You gave her a lightsaber. I gave her a toy lightsaber. You made it into a real lightsaber. It was her birthday. Who would make a child play with a broken toy on her birthday? You need to show more consideration. No! You need to show more consideration and, and sense and, and... We're arguing. That can't be right. The Mellows family always sticks together. Let's agree to never argue again. You armed a five-year-old. She could have decapitated me. Actually, lightsabers are rubbish at decapitation. If you get me into trouble, they'll send me back to the temporary. And if I go back, you can't come with me because they'll think you're a dog and dogs aren't allowed. Are you... Tears seemed to fill his big brown eyes. Throwing me out? No. I'm saying we have to not cause trouble. We have to be good. Oh, OK, OK. I'll be good if you will. Come on, let's fix the tree. Fix the tree? How do you fix a tree? You don't say read the manual because... And, and don't say read the manual because trees don't have manuals. What made the tree fall down? You did. Gravity. Gravity pulled it down, so gravity can put it back up. Gravity pulls things down. It does not pull things up. Gravity is a one-way street. Sputnik opened the stable door and strode out into the yard. Even the most one-way street ever, he said.
has its twists and turns. Ow! That moonlight's a bit strong. And he pulled his goggles down, stuffed his red notebook in his backpack and set off towards the garden. The moon shone right on the tree trunk, lighting up the cracks and ripples in its bark. Sputnik climbed onto the trunk and I followed him along it. The tree looked bigger and more wrecked than it had in the daytime. Bark crunched under our feet, branches creaked, leaves rattled. A bird that must have been hiding flew up in front of us in a whir of wings. The moon sailed overhead. It was like being on a ship. Sputnik stood still, licked his finger and held it in the air, as if he was testing the wind. North by northwest, he said, jumping off the tree trunk. Couldn't be easier. I can't feel any wind. I'm not talking about the wind. I'm talking about the gravity stream. The tree twisted as it fell. All we've got to do is twist it back up. If we can just get the tree upright. How are we going to get a tree upright? I'm a boy, not a crane. Sputnik sucked his teeth. Hmm, easy. We'll use the shed. He put his back to the wall of the shed and started to push. Come on, let's shove it. The wooden shed stood on a concrete platform. When we shoved it, it scraped across the concrete. The door shook, the window rattled, the latch jiggled. What are we doing? We're trying to launch the shed. Come on. Launch a shed? Gravity's not a sleepy bulldog. It doesn't just plonk itself down on the ground. Come on, shove harder. It comes in waves. Push it sideways. Way out there, two black holes bump into each other. And uh, nearly there, come on. That sends huge gravity waves rolling through the universe. One, two, three. Arrgh. The waves break on your planet and you've got gravity swishing and swirling everywhere. Very handy if you know how to use it. I was expecting the shed to drop off the ledge of concrete onto the grass. It didn't. Very, very slowly, the end drifted upwards. The back end was still touching the ground but only touching it like a balloon, not really resting on it like a shed. One more little nudge. The whole shed wobbled, then straightened up and was floating in the air. There's a gravity eddy just uh, here, said Sputnik. If we can settle the shed on top of it, uh, there we are. The shed started to drift away like one of those paper lanterns with a light inside. When it was a few feet up in the air, Sputnik jumped. No, he didn't jump. He leapt. He, he bent his knees and sprang, catapulting himself through the door of the shed. He reached into his backpack and tugged out a bright blue rope. Grab the rope, he called, dangling one end in front of me. Get the tree. Great, great job. Now, hold on. I had slung the rope round the biggest branch. Can you tie it on? Of course I could. Grandad was always very clear about the importance of being able to tie a good, firm knot. I could do a clove hitch, a half hitch, a reef, a stopper. Uh, that, those are all types of knots, by the way. I don't know if you've ever tried tying knots. All good sailors know how to do a good knot. Sorry, that's me, not the book. I'm telling you that. Just tie the knot. I tied a proper bowline knot, grabbed a handful of the lag and we pulled it tight. Next thing I knew, I was leaning in through the, dead, uh, the shed doorway with my legs dangling behind. Sputnik pulled me in. Welcome aboard, he said. Climb right in. We need the weight. Won't the shed stop floating if it weighs more? Oh, you really don't understand a thing about gravity, do you? The more mass a thing has, the more gravity it has. The more gravity the shed has, the more easily it will lift the tree. We leaned out of the door, 
The shed floated higher and higher until the rope grew taut. It tugged at the tree. Ah, there's a picture here. You see there's the shed floating and the rope attached to the tree. So as it gets higher, the rope goes taut and then pulls the tree up. Jump up and down. That usually helps. We bounced around inside the shed for a while, making it rock from side to side. Soon it leaned sideways as though it was taking a breath and then shot upwards so fast that we sat down giggling in surprise. <laughs> Through the doorway we could see the huge tree rising like a giant waking up. Its branches clutched at the air as it steadied itself. Haul her in, ordered Sputnik. Bring her round. We hauled on the rope. The tree turned. Its arms stretched out like, the, like those of a massive dancer. It waved once and stopped still. The fallen trunk had clicked back into place on the stump. There, I knew this place had the best gravity. You may be a danger to life and limb, but you know how to fix a tree. I tied the rope around one of the biggest branches, about halfway up the tree. Now that the tree was standing upright, the shed floated right up as far as the rope would allow. We sat in the doorway, looking down on the treetop. Look what I found in the branches, said Sputnik. It was the red lightsaber. I didn't want anything more to do with lightsabers. I just wanted to sit and look out across the farm and the hill. Quick little shadows fluttered all around us. Bats, said Sputnik, going back to their home in the tree. Everything went hush. Sounds we didn't know we were listening to stopped, as if someone had pushed the world's mute button. A feathery ghost shape, a feathery shape ghosted by. Barn Owl, said Sputnik. Did you hear how everything went quiet? Even you stopped breathing for a second. No one wants to be eaten by the owl. Oh, hear that? I couldn't hear anything. A bat's last squeak. The owl just swallowed it whole. So the owl is swooped in and gobbled a bat. Actually, sorry, again, interrupting the story. I remember going to see... Um, owls fly at uh, London Zoo and they told us that the reason they're silent, they can be so quiet, is because they have no oil in their feathers and so it makes them very quiet when they fly but it also means they get really wet when it rains so if it's wet their feathers get soaked with water and they can't fly so the animals are safe when it's raining. I just thought I'd mention that. The moon was brighter, uh, the moon was higher in the sky now and smaller, but the stars, the stars were fierce bright and there were billions and billions of them like grains of sugar piled up on a huge blackboard. I know now that the sky looks like that every night if you go somewhere dark enough, but that was the first time I'd ever seen the night sky properly. The shed rocked like a ship at anchor in a sea of stars. Spotnik took off his goggles and sniffed. Mmm, wood smoke, mm. roses, wild garlic, mm. lemonade, beer, lovely peaceful smells. Want a cigar? He took a cigar the size of a hot dog out of his pocket and snipped the end off with his scissors and then lit it with the lightsaber. Smoking is bad for you. Why does everyone think you're a dog? I'm just very, mm, you know, adaptable. But you don't look like a dog to me. Why not? Hmm. Because you are the reason I'm here. So the last chapter said, they were on a mission, wasn't it? Uh, and this now he's, we know that's the reason he's here. Sputnik's there to, for some reason to do with prayers. We'll find out soon. Have to wait till chapter five. Bye.